Men of Color, written by Mike Kirby. Black screen, cars stopping on gravel. Squeak of two car doors opening, then slamming shut. Shoes stepping on gravel, stops. Third car door opening, slamming shut. Footsteps crunching on gravel. In the year 2031, the world is broke and broken. The court system devolved into a congestion that came to be known as the inexhaustible overload. Grand juries, investigations, and DNA evidence all replaced by district evidentiary panels. And in 2031, someone always pays. Footsteps dumping on concrete. Fade in. Exterior. Darius Williams' house. Night. Blue Man 1 and Blue Man 2. Late 30s, dressed in ill-fitting long sleeve turtlenecks. Hands cinched tightly at the waist and tucked inside laced-up boots. Only their blue faces and hands are exposed. They accompany raggedy men, early 20s, slender, a kid who wears hand-me-downs, a tweed jacket with scuffed elbows and wool pants with patched knees. The neighborhood is bleak and in disrepair. There are no trees or shrubs. A streetlight blinks on and off. The three strike purposefully for the front door of Deodis Williams' house. Blue Man 1 turns the door handle. Door is locked. Removes a burglar pick from his pocket. Sticks pick into the keyhole. Rotates pick back and forth. Metallic clink of door being jimmy. Lock clicks open. Blue Man 1 stops. Turns the door handle 90 degrees. Hesitates. Removes pick. Pushes door open several inches. Squeak of the door hinges. Blue Man 1 turns ear toward door. Leans in slightly. Listens intently. Pushes door fully open and stands, in, stands aside. Raggedy Man steps inside. Blue Man 1 and Blue Man 2 follow. Interior, Darius Williams' house, night. Raggedy Man, Blue Man 1 and Blue Man 2 move silently across a small, sparse living room toward a dimly lit hallway. They turn right at the hallway where Raggedy Man presses himself against the wall. Blue Man 1 and Blue Man 2 move ahead. Interior, Darius Williams' hallway, continuous. A nightlight in the hallway hangs awkwardly, causing elongated shadows of the trio to appear on the opposite wall. Blue Man 1 and Blue Man 2 walk shoulder to shoulder, arms swinging in a synchronized rhythm. They approach the closed door at the end of the hallway in six strides. Raggedy Man follows closely behind. Blue Man 1 reaches for the door handle, rotates knob, pushes door open. Interior, Deodis Williams' bedroom, continuous. Blue Man 1 and Blue Man 2 walk hurriedly for a bed against the far wall. When they reach the foot of the bed, Blue Man 1 walks down the right side of the bed, while Blue Man 2 walks down the left side of the bed. Raggedy Man stops at the foot of the bed, removes an index card from his inside jacket pocket. Theodis Williams, an older black man, late 50s, rises up suddenly startled. His face shows the lines and crevices of a man beaten by the system. He pulls the covers up around his neck, frightened. Raggedy Man eyes Theodis, then begins reading from the card. Deodis Williams, the district evidentiary panel finds you must pay in the murder of Christine Norwood of 2002 Bay Circle. A flash of a woman's face, eyes wide, mouth open, white hands encircle her neck. Who are you? How did you get in my house? Three attestants said. Raggedy Man looks at Blue Man 1, then at Blue Man 2, nods. The Blue Man yanked the elders from under the sheets. He is wearing boxers. They drag him the length of the bed. Raggedy Man steps aside. Blue Man 1 and Blue Man 2 lift a struggling Theotis over the footboard and onto the floor, then roughly drag him toward the bedroom door. Raggedy Man slips the index card back in his pocket, turns, follows the Blue Man. Theotis glances back over his shoulder. But, but I don't know any Christine Norwood. Three attestants say different. Theotis swallowed hard, thinking. Raggedy Man removes the index card from his jacket once more. Three attestants say you were knocking at her door on the day she was killed. And not just that, knocking angrily. The oldest eyes widen, his expression flashes recognition. Flashback to exterior, Christine Norwood's front door, evening. The oldest holds a pizza box carrier, checks address numbers on door. Two, zero, zero, two. The oldest knocks, checks address, Knocks again. Exhales. Exasperated knocks again. Harder. Is anyone home? Come on now, someone has to pay for this pizza. 
The artist draws fist back, starts it downward. Cut to exterior government sedan present. Back passenger car door slams shut. The car is black and usually unusually small. Interior, government sedan, continuous. Theotis, still in his boxers, sits crammed in the back seat next to Raggedy Man. Blue Man 1 sits crammed in the driver's seat. Blue Man 2 sits crammed in the passenger seat. Don't you see? Someone ordered a pizza for 2002 Bay Circle. Raggedy Man removes index card from jacket pocket. This is not trial. But no one came to the door. No one answered. A prank, I guess, but someone has to pay. He knows the law. Without question. Government sedan speeds away, spinning gravel into air. Exterior, city streets, night. Government sedan speeds through vacant and dark city streets. In the year 2025, operator 4250893614, working at a district hair coloring corporation, discovered that ions manipulated in a solution of pigments exhibited a verifiable declension rate that the operator could manipulate. Some hailed it as the greatest discovery of the time. Exterior, district decoloring facility. Later, the government sedan pulls into the driveway of a modified Ford bay car wash. The sedan's lights illuminate the facility. The drive through for each bay has been sealed with cinder blocks. Each bay has a painted door with black writing on it. The first door is blue, written, thieves. The second door is yellow, written child molesters. The third door is green, written rapists. The fourth door is red, written murderers. Exterior, government sedan continuous. The driver's side door, the front passenger door, and the back left passenger door open simultaneously. Blue Man 1, Blue Man 2, and Raggedy Man exit. Montage. Blue Man 1 walking around the back of the car. The oldest doors swinging open. The oldest being jerked from the car. Blue hands clamping onto Deotis' upper arms. Deotis being dragged toward the red door. Deotis being spun 180 degrees so his back is to the door. Raggedy Man withdrawing packing peanuts from coat pocket. Deotis' face trembling. Peanuts being pushed into Deotis' ears and nostrils. Red door swinging open. Raggedy Man pushing Deotis inside. Interior. Red discoloring room. Moments later, Deotis stands in the center of the room an unlit red light is mounted on a sidewall. Under the light is a sign, written, red dye equals 50 years. Theotis glances overhead. A shower head hangs from the ceiling. A single drop of red dye dangles from one of the openings. Theotis closes both eyes. The drop falls, splatters onto Theotis' forehead. Theotis lowers head, opens eyes, stares at raggedy men. Door slams shut. I would hold my breath right about. Deotis stares at the closed door, then at the red light. Light flashes on. Now. A compressor kicks on, hums noisily. Deotis lowers chin toward chest, B. The shower head spews red dye. Exterior, street outside Deotis Williams' house, day. Run down neighborhood, every house looks the same and all are in the same state of this repair. Each yard is landscaped with rocks of assorted sizes. The street is gravel. A red Deotis stands on the sidewalk le leading to his house. Watches government sedan speed away. Three small boxes and a duffel bag lay near the curb. Deotis glances up the sidewalk toward his front door. Taped to the door is a sign, written, evicted. Deotis turns back, kneels beside one of the boxes, opens it, pulls out a balled up shirt and pants, stands, glances around the street, slips into the pants, then the shirt kneels beside open box. Inside are two coffee mugs, a toothbrush, a half-used tube of toothpaste, and his wedding picture. Pulls wedding photo from the box, runs finger over photo. I'm ashamed to say, Addy, but I'm awfully glad you didn't have to live to witness this. Don't feel bad. Theotis turns, startled. Eskimo, a tall green man, late forties with a full beard that surrounds his face, points at the boxes. Who's that? I was just saying that a man shouldn't feel bad about the quantity of his property. Who are you? Eskimo glances around, nervous. Just a man paying, same as you. Theotis stands, looks around, trying to see what it is that worries Eskimo. No, I meant, why are you here? Can I help you with those? What do I do now? Where do I go? Eskimo bends down, stacks one box on top of another. 
There's a place not far from here where men of color stay. How did you know? Eskimo picked up the two stack boxes, nods at the remaining box and duffel. Can you manage those okay? The artist nods slightly, places photo back into the box, reaches for the duffel. I still don't understand how you knew. There's a woman who works in the district discoloring office. She had a son who was once one of us. Was? So she tells us, you know, so there's someone to help the new people understand how to survive. Her son was? Eskimo glances around the neighborhood again. It, it might be the best if we walk now. Theodis nods, stands, slings a duffel over his shoulder, and reaches for the remaining box. Eskimo walks away in long, fast-paced strides. Theodis makes a face, confused, starts after Eskimo. Wait, her, her son was? Eskimo doesn't look back, glances up and down the street. He was killed on a street just like this one after he got his color, just like you. He didn't know where to go, and because he didn't know where to go, he clung to that one familiar thing, his housing neighborhood. And they killed him? Dead. Who paid? Front doors of houses along the street start to open. A steady stream of residents exit. Eskimo notices the movement, immediately lowers his head. There's no pay for killing a man of color. The other stops. I'm not running. I'm not like you. Eskimo stops and turns. You're just like me. No, I didn't kill anyone. I didn't commit a crime. Eskimo takes a step toward the others. You think the truly guilty pay? They're, this is about power. The kind of power that can make an innocent man guilty. Grumbling builds from the residents. Some bend down, sort through the rocks in their yards. A young girl, no more than ten, gently bounces a rock in her palm checking its weight and balance. Exterior, neighborhood street, day. They always stares at his neighbors. What are they doing? Eskimo turns, walks away fast. Making sure we get out of their neighborhood, quick like. But I know these folks. New, things have changed. What? You knew them, you don't anymore. Sometimes that's the hardest part to get used to. They always starts forward, hurries to catch up to Eskimo. You're wrong. I know these folks knew. And you think they would kill me? Dead. Theodis stops. An innocent man wouldn't run away. A rock sails out of the crowd and lands near Theodis' feet. Theodis looks in the direction of the crowd. He's surprised and shocked. A second rock bounces into the street ahead of Theodis. He glances from one side of the street to the other. What are you doing? Silence. Another rock lands in the street. Then another. A rock strikes Theodis in the leg. More rocks land close by. Theodis winces, rubs his leg, suddenly frightened. Doesn't understand the neighborhood's behavior. Get out of here, Redder! Eskimo sprints down the street. Theodis looks at Eskimo, then at the crowd. His expression is pure fear, takes off running. That's it, keep running! Theodis runs faster, face contorted in fear, yells at Eskimo. Wait. Hey, wait! Eskimo doesn't look back. Disappears over a small rise in the street. There's no waiting. Just running. Fifty years of it. A lifetime! The Otis runs even faster. Races over the rise. Wait! Residents eye the rise intently. After a short pause, they shake their heads. A few who still hold rocks open their fists. The rocks drop in a rain-like clatter. Some wipe their palms against one another, satisfied. All slowly drift back inside their homes. Exterior street day. A running Theodis slows to a walk, then a complete stop. Looks ahead, confused. Eskimo is barely visible in the distance. Looks back, shakes head, looks down at the box. An innocent man wouldn't run. Hesitates briefly, thinking, drops box. Crunch of cardboard box, hitting gravel. In the year 2031, the guilty are remanded inside a prison whose bars are the shade of their own skin. Theodis slips the duffel from shoulder, slowly lowers it to the ground, keeps fingers tight on strap, hesitant to let go, looks back, then ahead, opens fingers slowly, slips hand from strap, takes off running, fade out.